Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon, I mean. Or maybe good morning. I don't know. Sean Carlson from Blackjack Night 8 Enterprises. Uh, today is Thursday, January 16th, uh, 2025. Right. Happy New Year. <laughs> Have you ever had problems with your small engine where it was backfiring? Or maybe it, well, you got everything put together properly as best that you possibly could. Yet when you're operating it, it was at low power and you couldn't get it to the correct RPMs. It could have something to do with the timing and it could have something to do with your flywheel and it could have something to do with a lot of other things. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about two stroke engines and timing. I just had an incident with an engine on a two stroke blower in which the timing was off and even though I did the engine rebuild on it, I didn't find this out until after and I couldn't figure out why until I took out the flywheel and looked at the keyway. Now, here's a picture of the, um, here's a picture of the flywheel that I am talking about. That flywheel in particular is, um, what I would consider garbage like a money-making flywheel where if you broke that flywheel you would have to buy a new one in my particular case when I went and uh, broke the keyway on the flywheel I had to use needle chisels needle not chisels needle files and then file it down so I could make my own keyway and then put it in there and then put epoxy around it so that way it didn't move and it worked I got the timing exactly the way that it was supposed to be and timing is important on a two-stroke engine because if you have any misfiring it might not work the way that you want it to. Behind me is the diagram that we're going to look at as to how exactly uh, timing should be corrected on your small engine. So let's get to it. Okay so the following videos will show you the difference between a sheared keyway and a properly tuned keyway that's in line with top dead center. Okay, so this is a crude drawing of a flywheel and a crankshaft. So this represents the flywheel, this is the crankshaft, and this right here is just the space between the, the um, flywheel and the crankshaft that you don't normally notice. So this edge is normally touching this edge. So I just exaggerated everything on here that we could. Okay, now. This part here represents the gap that is on the flywheel and this represents the gap that is on the crankshaft. On certain engines you have a separate flywheel which you can just buy and put in and they look something like a half moon like that. Okay, so some engines have that if they're older, some of the new ones do not. The um, keyway is actually embedded directly right into the flywheel so that way if you damage the keyway you have to buy a new flywheel that's a money-making opportunity that some uh, companies have made and I found a way that um, well if you sheared this off for whatever reason you can take a micro needle uh, needle files and then file it down to the best that you possibly could to, to create your own keyway for that. The crankshaft is made out of steel. Flyways, flywheels are made out of uh, soft aluminum, aluminum or soft steel or whatever. But the keyway is always made out of aluminum or soft aluminum or something so that way it can shear. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, power stroke which is on this flywheel. The direction of the turning when you're rewinding your small engine, whether it's a weed whacker, a blower, a generator, whatever, let's just say this is the direction that it is turning. So, 
This is top dead center. This is top dead center. This is top dead center. This represents the piston. This represents the piston as well. Now, this represents the piston with the piston going moving down and this represents the piston moving up. Okay, they're the same. These two are the same. They're just two separate and there's a reason for that. When your piston is at top dead center, you have a volume between um, the spark plug and the top of the piston, which is like this right here. And the spark plug is like right here. It's got the uh, node and there, and it creates spark, okay? So when the piston goes up, the magneto um, on the engine coil, the north-south part is passing the magneto. And at that point, it sends the spark to the spark plug and it fires at top dead center. And then it makes the trip all the way down to bottom dead center, which is right here. And then it makes the trip going back up right here on the return. So this is the power stroke. This is the suction stroke. The suction means that it is sucking the gas or the fumes from the carburetor and is going to um, and it's going to the spark plug. Okay, so we're going to put a note here, spark plug. Okay, so the top of the piston is right here, and it goes down. It's exploding. So it's exploding, it's ignited, and it's pushing the flywheel around. It's also pushing. When the piston is at the bottom dead center, the counterweight is at the top dead center. The counterweight is at the opposite of the uh, piston to help... The movement of the piston go around with the motion. Now, once it's at the bottom dead center, that means the exhaust has also exited from the um, muffler, which is usually on this side. The carburetor is on this side. Okay, so once it goes back up, it is creating the suction to bring the gas into the, the, the cylinder and it is also sucking it up into closer to the top dead center so that way the piston can ignite it and, uh, and uh, for those of you that know it, it just keeps on doing that okay so ignite power stroke return suction ignite power stroke return suction okay and that's the cycle that's the two stroke cycle on a two stroke engine the power stroke and a suction stroke. Exhaust, intake. Exit, enter. Now, what happens if you shear your keyway? And this is now, and the center of this is now, let's say, right here. Okay, now we have a problem because we got a misfire. So, using geometry, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line to this point right here. And then we're going to relate it to the piston. Okay, now, your keyway is right here. You sheared it. You don't, I don't know how you sheared it, and you don't even know how you sheared it out. You just found that you have, maybe you don't even know that you have a sheared keyway. But you're about to find out what the diagnosis is. So, the, before, you had a volume of right here. That is the volume of the gas that is being ignited. As a result of the misfiring of the keyway, you just lowered it, and now this is the volume that is being ignited. <coughs> just so you know, there is more volume of air or gas or fuel that is in this area right here. So when it does ignite, you now have a weaker power stroke. You went from 100% and you probably went down to 80% right here. If you sheared it to right around here and it goes across like that, you pr so let's just say 80%, you probably went right here down to 60% power stroke. Now, your exhaust port is something like right around this area here. This is your exhaust port. This is where the gas exits the cylinder. 
okay? The moment you have your sheared keyway go past this on the power stroke and it's in this area from right here to right here, you go down quite a lot. So you're going down to like basically 0% by the time that you get to this area right here because there is no way that when this ignites at the bottom of the piston opening that you're getting any pressure onto the, the um, flywheel or the crankshaft. So you would have no pressure at all. It will still go down because you're pulling on the rewind, but when it goes back up around, it'll continue to do that. Zero percent pressure, zero percent ignition, right at this point here. Okay, now let's say that you sheared it and it is now over here. So, or yeah, over here. So let's draw a line right at this point here. Okay, now we're gonna go across. So, your crank is right here, which means the, um, uh, I'm drinking too much. The, uh, the spark plug is igniting at this point, which means there is no fuel being ignited anywhere in here. There's no fuel. You're just, um, having a backfire because of the fact that your exhaust port with respect to your carburetor port the carburetor port is always lower than the exhaust okay and you might not realize that but if you look at your small engine that is exactly the fact on a two-stroke the height of the exhaust port is lower than the height of the carburetor port. So even though you miss fire right here, you're getting 0% firing from this part right here. And if it does ignite, you're going to have a backfire and it's going to leave from here going out. That is what causes your backfire. Okay, so if any reason that you have a backfire, it's going to be because um, the crank has um, been sheared and it's and this... Um, keyway is now right here which means nothing is happening and if it's um, cr depending on the position of the uh, keyway where you hear it it could depend on whether it's going to fire or not but right here it's going to fire between the top of the exhaust port to the top of the dead center you will have a firing only at this location and if you did have a firing from here it would happen from the top of the um, carburetor port the suction to here, okay? But it would push it down. It would push the crank down. And even though you're pulling it in this direction on the rewind, it would backfire. So this would be one of the reasons why you have problems with a low stroke or low power on your weed whack or weed whacker your small engine generator or whatever on a two stroke only it's because of the misplaced keyway in order for it to be 100 percent the timing needs to be correct straight up and down and it needs to fire at top dead center only if it fires anywhere else on this circle you're going to have lower percentage right to the top of the right to the top of the exhaust and then right down to zero all the way back up to the top of the center it's not going to fire so from here down it's not going to fire but from here to here it will decrease depending on the position of your keyway so that is one of the reasons that um you really need to take off the kiwi or the flywheel and look at it to make sure that it's not even off by a percentage. Even off a small percentage, it's not going to be 100%. Right at this point here is 100%. Firing, you got full power. You can adjust your carburetor right up to the top of the center. You're going to get full power to come out of the factory. By the time that you get around here, it's uh, you're going to have trouble with the carburetor adjustments and you're not going to figure it out. Okay? So, having said that, everybody, 
that will be it. And if there is any of you that have anything that you would like to add on to this video, I look forward to hearing from it. Until then, have a good day. And cheers!